Now the hour has come to liberate the entire world from all oppressions of the devil through the preaching of the word of faith. And I'm sending you to undertake this task. Lift up those two hands one more time. And the spirit entered into me when he spake unto me and changed my position, changed my level. Lord, my heart is open for impartation this hour. Lord, cause the spirit of the world to enter into me. Cause the spirit of the world to enter into me tonight and change my position. Thank you, Jesus. In the precious name of Jesus Christ, we have prayed. Amen. The Lord sent a word into Jacob. He turned him into a nation. like every participant at Shiloh 2015 to be desperate for a world encounter that will change their world altogether. Amen. Because the dominion of darkness over light is instant and unquestionable. And the entrance of his world give it light. And gives understanding to the simple. Light will never struggle with darkness. Every time light steps in, darkness steps out. So tonight, as light begins to dawn on your life, darkness is vanishing at the same time. There shall be great encounters with destiny tonight. In the name of Jesus. Life is in form of a book. He said the vision of all is like a book that is sealed. And give it to a man that is not learned. Read. He said, I can't because I'm not learned. I mean, I, I cannot because it's sealed. Then it's given to a man that is not learned. Read, I pray thee. He said, I can't read because I'm not learned. Life is a book and a book is in chapters. Some of us perhaps have a 40 chapter package. And we're just in chapter one. At Shiloh 2015, God will open the next chapters of your life up. That's Isaiah 29, verse 11 and 12. My life is a book in the hand of God, and it contains or made up of chapters. And as I work with them, he opens one chapter after another. There are people here in this Shiloh that are not just one chapter will be open. Some we have two chapters open. Some we have three chapters open. Some we have four chapters open. But everybody is changing level at Shiloh 2015. If that is you, let me hear your loudest amen. amen. Now, Shiloh 2015. Come on, let me hear you say it. And from glory to glory. Are you really going there? Shiloh 2015. And from glory to glory 
You are getting there in this Shiloh. You believe that? Let me hear your loudest. Amen. Give the Lord a big hand of praise and get seated. Let me one more time welcome all participants globally to Shiloh 2015. God has reserved an experience you will never forget for you this Shiloh. Shiloh 2015 shall be your own Shiloh. In the name of Jesus. I'll be taking us on a series captioned Engaging the Wonders of Divine Visitation. Engaging the Wonders of Divine Visitation. Engaging the Wonders of Divine Visitation. From Luke chapter 19, we discover that it's possible for God to visit the earth or visit his church and people will not know. He wept because they knew not the time of their visitation. Luke 19 and verse 44. They knew not. They were like Jacob. God has been here and I knew it not. He awaked out of sleep. He never knew a great thing was taking place. Engaging the wonders of divine visitation. Divine visitation is what we call a revival. And every divine visitation is ordained to change man's position. Joseph said, I died. But God will surely visit you. Genesis 50 verse 24. I'll bring you out of this land of bondage, shame and reproach into the land which is sworn to thy father, Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. God will surely visit you and change your story. So every divine visitation is ordained for man's change of story. A revival can be defined as a manifestation of divine visitation among the people. The Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. Divine visitation. A manifestation of divine visitation among these people. God does not just visit and go. He visits to change the position of his people. When God came down to Egypt through Moses, he stayed on in their midst until he brought them into the promised land. Every divine visitation is to fulfill divine agenda. And I can tell you, we are in the end time. The time of the reigning church shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established on the top of the mountains. Micah 4, 1 and 2. And shall be exalted above the hills, and all nations shall flow into it. For out of Zion shall proceed the law 
authority in the end time will be domiciled in the church. And the word of the Lord will be flourishing from his church. Let me say at this point, the ark of revival has landed on our shores. Nigeria will be a vital force in driving God's end time agenda. And this commission has been positioned by divine election to play a leading role among others. Watch it. Something is about bursting forth and there shall be series of Outburst at Shiloh 2015. As God begins to reveal Himself to us, please understand we are in a revival. A revival has begun. Not going to begin, a revival has begun. And in the name of Jesus, not one person under the sound of my voice will be left behind. Not one person under the sound of my voice will be left behind. God said, I've seen the affliction of my people, therefore am I come down. And he said, come down, Moses. And I go down through you to change the story of my people. Has God changed? God is still coming down through human instruments and carrying out the divine agenda on the earth. And I can tell you something. We are in for what no one has ever known before. Things have happened, but things we begin to happen at dimensions too great to be comprehended by human mind. And that will include in your own life. Yeah. You believe that? Let me hear your loudest. Amen. Yeah. When he came down to Egypt, he stayed on in their midst until he brought them into the promised land. How do I know that we are in a revival? From scriptures we understand Every move of God covers all categories of people. I will pour my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. And also upon the servants and upon the handmaids. In those days will I pour my spirit. How do I know that we're in a revival? When the move of the spirit covers all age groups, then you know that we're in a revival. Then you know that we're in a revival. Sometimes back, a four-year-old boy in this church, four-year-old, was given some little seed by his pastor and he told the mother, I want to buy a book. And then got to the bookstore what of this? Say no. What of this? Say no. That's the one I want. Sickle cell anemia boy. Yes. Told the mother. Now start reading to me. The mother started reading it. He got to the point. He said, "Read that portion again. Read that portion again. Read that portion again." That same week, by Wednesday, S. S. Ton A. A. Little boy. Little boy. A 13 year old this year said, I want my grade in mathematics to change. So carried 91, 93 flyers. I want a 93 figure in mathematics. And went and distributed that. Say, Lord, I'm telling them that you love them. Show that you love me. 
came out. Net A. Same number. The move of the spirit covering all ages of people. 18 year old young man shared a testimony yesterday. I just tango like a dream of the night. I'm now a landlord. 18 year. 18 year old. He said by the sacrifice of last year Shiloh. God has blessed my business. I'm now a landlord. At 18. At 18. Now listen. We are in a revival. The spirit of God is moving across all age groups. Showing himself mighty. 19 year old child was given a home cell that was dying. And he heard me say, if your cell does not re replicate, you are a failure. He left the room crying. We are having leadership meeting. And said to himself, this must happen. Five hours of prayers a day. Outreaches. Move the cell to 49. Replicate that to 3. From, from 4 people. Move it to 49. It's in America today by divine lifting. Before he left, himself, father, mother, and the siblings were living in one room. After he was done, God said, now, go to some so place. Choose any university of your choice. Is there any grand style? They didn't have to pay a dime. When the move of God covers all a group, please be awake. Be awake. Something is bursting forth in the land. There shall be an awesome outbreak of the move of God in this land. Africa is being visited. Amen. Something never known before is breaking forth. Amen. Some three, four weeks ago, a 75-year-old girl. How many years? During the first outreach here, led nine people to Christ, got them established in church, water baptism, believers foundation class, word of faith Bible institute, service group. Within seven weeks. The next seven weeks, got 65 souls. 75 year old, got 65 souls. The move of God sweeping across all the groups. Joy chapter 2, verse 28 and 29. I'll pour my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. And also upon these servants, upon the handmaids in those days, will I pour my spirit. And I will show signs. Verse 30 in heaven. I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth. Blood, fire. Wow. Pillars of smoke. We are in a revival. Any regular believer will miss out of it. Any nominal believer will miss out of it. Churchism is giving way to realities. Churchism is giving way to realities. Churchism is giving way to realities. We are in a revival. Things are breaking forth. Wake up to it. Engaging the wonders of divine visitation. Now, let me show you something here very scary. First Samuel chapter 4 and verse 4. So the people sent to Shiloh that they might bring forth, hence the ark of the covenant of the Lord of hosts, which dwelleth between the cherubims, and the two sons of Eli, Ophine and Phinehas, were there with the ark of the covenant of God. And when the 
ark of the covenant of the Lord came into the camp. All Israel shouted with a great shout. So that the earth rang again. Now, that is divine presence came into the war from. The people shouted. The earth rang. God's presence announced. The Lord reigned. Let the earth tremble. The earth rang again. But they only celebrated it. They did not engage it. They only celebrated They were only entertained by it. They did not engage it. When the Philistines heard the shout, they said, we are dead. The God of the Hebrews has come down in their midst. Ah! Bless up. Bless fight. They had the ark, but did not engage the ark. So, they were defeated, and the ark was captured. Zazuru Shagrata Protinado. But to show how much power was in the ark, the ark was put in the shrine of Dagon. Or Dagon, whatever they call him. And Dagon shifted. Came before the ark and fell down, statue. Come and say, power. They say, what nonsense? So they put it up again. The following morning, they gone did not only fall down, they gone went back to the place. Fell down, the arm caught, the legs caught, maimed. Power! Power was left unengaged. Zazuru Shaglarato Zazi. It's not enough to have a divine visitation. We must learn to engage that visitation. Neno susa, embratu sanota said, shishiri akalakurati anepra. You can be in the midst of a mighty revival and remain a victim. You can be in the midst of a mighty revival and have no reflection on your life. They moved the ark from the shrine of Dagon. Meanwhile, all the people in that city were smitten. They moved the place. He smote them in their private parts. They said, ah, don't bring the ark. They had to beg to move the ark back to Israel. The ark of power came in the midst of them and couldn't deliver because they would not engage it. And they out. says, yeah. On the second of May, God came down to me in the evening time of Friday of, of that Saturday. I, the God of wonder, double is visiting you. I was like a wild wind. What about? I've never heard the word wonder double in my life. Never read it in a book. I, the God of wonder, double is visiting you. What? Then my understanding opened by the Holy Ghost. I'm going to double this joy. Eh? So I, I called the pastors with me, but four of them, and said, Hey, God just spoke to me that I, the God of wonder, double is visiting you. Sir, in seven weeks, you are doubled. In seven weeks. In seven weeks, you are doubled. It's not enough to have a visitation. You must engage that visitation maximally. Many of us have had revelation that didn't deliver no result because they were not engaged. It's not enough to write this thing down. It's much more important to engage with them and engage till they deliver. Amen. On the spot, strategies went into place. On the spot, action plan drawn. On the spot, action began. And Okulaf thought we would be having space crisis here. No. No. In that 
church season. One Sunday we increased by 28,500. Another Sunday, 33,000 plus. Another Sunday, 48,000 plus over the previous. We are in a revival. The ark of testimonies has landed in Africa. Africa shall be shaken from the roots. Only the unshakables will remain in the land. The forces of darkness will pack their luggage and go somewhere else. Please understand we are in the midst of a mighty revival. Mighty revival. We are in the midst of a mighty revival. How do we know when a revival is in place? A revival is said to occur when men's heart begin to pant after God. Amen. My heart panted after thee, O God, as the heart pants after the streams of water. Psalm 42, verse 1. When men's heart begins to pant after God. What am I saying is you need to know whether you are in a revival or not by understanding this definition. When man's heart begins to pant after God as a way of life, they are not, you're not struggling. Your heart is just all out after God. You're not playing church. You are just God driven, God motivated, God focused. In the morning, God. In the afternoon, God. In the night, God. Everything God turns you on. Anything else. Okay, I've heard you. They don't impact on your life. When man's heart begins to pant after God, they never stop making marks. Give me your heart. And let your eyes observe my ways. Give me your heart. You make your marks without sweat. You make your marks in life without sweat. Just give me your heart. An army of men across our churches worldwide, and especially in Lagos, where I'm very conversant with, are operating on that frequency today. One hour straight prayer, kingdom focused prayer, praying for souls to be saved, praying for souls to be established in the kingdom with all passion. People here fasting for 40 days, 50 days, they are not pastors by their choice. Oh God, save. Deliver, rescue, establish in the name of Jesus. And you find their needs to be met. That 75 year old elder was bothered about her daughter that needed to be married. Easy. Don't have to ask for that. It's a Matthew 33 revival. Seek you first the kingdom of God. And all these things that others are dying to get, they shall be added to you. Who said anything? When man's heart begins to pant after God, then we said we are in a revival. When your heart begins to pant after God, then you are a partaker of a revival. You are engaging with the revival. When your heart is always after things, what to have, what to add, what to spend, what to wear, blah, 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 you are far from it.
everything ever added to my life, they were added when God considers them due. I didn't have to ask for any of them. So, I've never prayed for a house. They are added when considered due. I never pray for an aircraft in my life. Not once. Never confess it. Never prepare for it. Never say for it. They were added as at work deal. I've never prayed for a car in my life. And I wanted to pray for it anymore. As I mean in my life. One of us said, I wish I knew that the answer to all my issues is in Matthew 6, 33. That I wish I knew. Somebody here is breaking forth. You must leave this place a partaker of this mighty revival in the land. Somebody believe that. Let me hear your loudest. Amen. Let me hear your loudest. Amen. Let me hear your loudest. Amen. A revival can, is also said to occur when walking in the fear of God becomes a way of life among the people. Walking in the fear of God becomes a way of life. You are not struggling. You are just, you are just on. To please God is your greatest desire. Hallelujah. To please God becomes your greatest desire. You are not hanging around for nothing. Maybe I can even share this secret with you. I stood before the Lord. What must happen to me at Shiloh? What must I return with at Shiloh? My father, one thing have I desired and that will I seek after to remain a worthy vessel in your kingdom. To accomplish all that you have called me to do. And wear the crown of righteousness at the end of my sojourn here on earth. My father, help me to remain sanctified. The remaining days of my life. And deliver me from evil. That it may not slay me. Deliver me from messengers of Satan that may want to defy me and make me unworthy of my calling. Don't need no car. Don't need no dress. Don't need no position. Don't need no title. I must walk the streets of gold. Yes. Don't care what anybody has. I must walk the streets of gold. <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, you must follow me there. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I must meet you there. We'll be exchanging high five all the way. You made it. You made it. You made it. You made it. Praise God, we made it. Praise God, we made it. Come on, give high five to someone next to you there. Praise God, we made it. Hallelujah. That is what they call a revival. I have never read this to any man in my life. It's not a make-believe junk. It's not all this money crazy syndrome. We're talking about that. Talking about people panting after God. Yes. So if I was still riding my Volkswagen B2, I would not be any less devoted. God knows. I love him far above things. So he won't let me lack anything. A revival is set to occur when living and walking in the fear of God becomes a way of life. You don't sit and talk in junk. You don't wear Kana dress. You don't speak Kana words. God becomes the controller of your life and your thought. Somebody's breaking forth. Why am I saying this? Only those who care to engage 
with a reviver become partakers of the benefits thereof. Everyone that is committed to moving the ark moves forward with the ark. You can't be pushing a truck and be behind. As the truck is moving, you are moving. It's not enough for us to be in a revival. You must be in a revival as a person. You must be in a revival as a person. You must be in a revival as a person. Because the benefits are unfathomable. You'll be hearing amazing things here. One of us went out and witnessed in two hours, got 14 souls. And God said, go to bed. I want to operate on you. Life. Not that you slept and then something happened. He said, go to bed. I want to operate on you. And an elbow metal implant fixed in 2007 after he had an accident or had an attack by armed robbers drop on his own afternoon as he slept no opening no blood no nothing came out of the hand for, on his own for free you can't buy that with money for the first time I felt life in my hand since 2007 it's been going through excruciating pains but by engaging with the move of God he removed his torments and torture glory to God so it's not enough to be in the midst of a revival you must endeavor to be a partaker of that revival man, men like Daniel will rise who we rather born than bow. Who we stand for God with everything inside them. Can you imagine somebody now make me deny Jesus? Okay, for what? To get what? Don't stand in the middle of the road, please. It's a risk. Don't be lukewarm. You'll be spooled out. You'll be messed up. The ark of God unengaged turns to be captured. Power will fall before weakness. We're not engaged. But in the name of Jesus, from the mountain of Shiloh 2015, you are returning as a man and a woman on fire. Number three, how do we know when we're in a revival? When God's people begins to take pleasure in the things of the kingdom as a way of life, they just take pleasure. They are not under pressure. It is their delight. Psalm 102, one verse 13 to 15, the Bible says, Thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion, for the time to favor her, yea, the set time is come. For thy servants take pleasure in the stones of Zion and favor the dust thereof. Therefore, the heathen shall fear the name of the Lord and all the kings of the earth. Thy glory. For when the Lord shall build up Zion, it shall appear in it. We were talking about glory to glory. Now, can I tell you this? Revival is the platform for walking in the realm of from glory to glory. You take pleasure in the kingdom. He brings fearful blessings on your life. And all the end of the year begins to fear the glory of God in your life. Taking pleasure. Seek ye for the kingdom of God and his treasures and all these things that others are dying to get, they shall be added to you. Men and brethren, sons and daughters in the faith. Now listen to me. This church has never prayed for money. Check it. Not that, okay, now they may not pray. From the beginning, sir. 
from the beginning. That, oh God, so I lost money. No. I told my mentor, Dr. Copeland, I said, we don't pray for money. We just do what brings money. We do what brings money. But, oh God, this outreach must deliver. Oh God, the sick must be healed. Oh God, the customer will be set free. Did you watch the message of Jesus? Did you see any emphasis on bring ten naira? Go, 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 come down. Somebody here, some, somebody, yes, yeah, from Kano, come. How many times? They are all modern techniques after missing God. After missing God, you won't miss God. Amen. You won't miss God. It's not right. It's not in the Bible. If you can't see it in Christ, you can't see it in your forces. It's not there. It's not in the Bible. They are all human schemes. All human schemes. All kinds. You come to this church and say, your name is David. Well, one, one million Davids here. <laughs> Even children are not born in their world. They are calling them by name. Maybe. It's not, that's not the thing. It's not the Bible. It's not. It's not. This is an absolutely debt free ministry from inception. No, they came out of debt. This facility was built debt free. University built debt free. Salary is paid debt free. Pressure free. Never on the item of the council. Because it's not an issue. Can you put on your agenda that, okay? Eating uh, through the month. No, because it's, it's, it, you should be able to eat by what you are earning. Somebody is coming out of pressure yeah. by taking on dying pleasure in the things of the kingdom. Things of the kingdom. Ah, men and women in this local assembly have dazed me with testimonies of things I've never heard or read. By their personal engagements, unbelievable engagements. One of the scholars here was written on the for 50 days. 50 days. Oh God, grow your church. Oh God, move on the altar. Oh God, 50 days. 50 days. 50 days. Taking on dying pleasure. And kingdom matters. That is what has created the little future I'm working in now. My life. September 12, 1976. I signed up to make Jesus my reason for living. I've never had anything. I've never had anything. Somebody here tonight will sign up. To make kingdom promotion, kingdom advancement, kingdom enlargement, your sole reason for living. That's my encounter with destiny. Matthew 6 33 set the pace for the future that could not be seen by others. If I was selling pure water, I'll be a star. I found the secret. I found the secret. You don't have to be a pastor. No, to be a servant of God, no. Abraham was not. He was a business stalwart. But he said, Abraham, my servant. Job was the greatest man. Greatest man in his time. He said, have you considered my servant, Job? Daniel was a political leader. Daniel, servant of the most high God, is thy God whom thou servest day and night to deliver you from it. Now, listen to me. There is coming a rise of giants from Shiloh 2015. Men and women, you can't stop. 
men and women, you can't stop their way. Men and women who will have it the way they want it. Many of them are hearing me right now. You believe that? Let me hear your loudest. Amen. We must therefore pray, O oh Lord, stay of my spirit to engage maximally this divine visitation to my own advantage. Absolutely to your own advantage and nothing else. What is in this for me? Some of the blessings that accompany a reviver will help motivate you and reposition you to keep engaging with delight. To keep engaging with delight. To keep engaging with delight. First, it's important for us to know that every move of God moves people forward. Say with me, every move of God moves people forward. Habakkuk chapter 3 and verse 2. Revive thy work, O God. In the midst of the year. In the midst of the years, make known thy power and wrath. Remember mercy. Verse 17. Although the fig tree shall not blossom, as we are doing that, there may not be fruit in the vine, but keep doing it rejoicing. Then it will make you feel like high, high speed and bring to your high places. Every move of God is ordained to move those who engage with it forward. Come and say, I'm going forward. Let me hear you say convincingly. Say convincingly. Every move of God moves people forward. Somebody got a job here and was paid one year off from salary. Have you ever heard that? You have not resumed. What if you didn't come? One year off front, sir. One year off front. Somebody in business here had people sowing seed to his business from abroad. He's not a pastor. They were sowing seed in thousands of dollars to revive the business as he was engaging. A kingdom advancement in divorce. Every move of God moves people forward. It takes you from your valleys into your high places. Every move of God moves people forward. As long as you are engaging in rejoicing, you are not under pressure. You are just yourself. You are just having fun. You are just having fun. You are having the best of your life. The best of your life. Every move of God moves people forward. Now, there was an, a revival here in Jeremiah chapter 30. The Bible says in verse 19, out of them shall proceed thanksgiving and the voice of them that make merry and I will multiply them because revival time is time of multiplication. Time of what? Every revival advances the church of Christ. Every true revival, come and say every true revival. When you see a church at the same spot, there is no revival there. Every true revival advances the church of Christ. Every true revival advances the church of Christ. Let all my pastors, sons and daughters and friends who are in the house get angry with stagnation. Every true revival advances the church of Christ. Every true revival is, and I will multiply them, and they shall not be few. I will also glorify them, and they shall not be small. That means I'm not just going to be gathering reef rats. As I gather, I'll be changing their stories, Hallelujah. changing their levels of glory. Amen. Now, and, it's, and their nobles shall be of themselves. 21. Come and say, change your level. Every revival moves people forward. They are nobles. I've been saying this, sir. Listen. The highest concentration of giants in the history of man will rise from this platform. Yeah. That is, we are talking about captain.
days of industry, there will be their large numbers. Global financiers will be their large numbers. Greatest employers of labor will be their large numbers. Because everyone engaging with the move of God moves forward. Moves forward. So it's our season of supernatural advancement. And that will answer in your life. I was talking the other time when you see the Holy Ghost just move across all age groups. One of our elders, 87 year old. How old? How old? Distributed 350 flyers inviting people to Jesus at the gate of our next state one Saturday morning. Jesus loves you. Expect you in church tomorrow. Jesus loves you at 87. At what? It's a move of God. Not that, okay, go and stay there. I don't know. Each one chooses where to stay. To serve his God. They are hard, panting after God. Now, listen to me. We are in that age when at 120 people will still be bouncing. Because you have no reason to get you out of here. If you are still produce, productive, if you are still fruitful. One of our converts went to the prison to see the one who led him to Christ. And he said, Papa said, deliverers are so few. God cannot allow you to be kept here because we knew nothing about this following the release following the release his convert spoke to him with tears in his eyes and brought the one who led him to Christ out something is happening something is happening in the name of Jesus no one's life will remain at the same spot again It's an open-ended platform. Serving God is not a gift, it's a choice. Choose ye this day whom ye shall serve. As for me and my house, who will serve the Lord? Now listen to me. The choice is yours. To engage, disengage, or nonchalant. The, cho- the choice is yours. When I saw that light, I signed up consciously in a covenant for it. You have had many things that would have changed your life 1,000 times over. But did you do anything with it? That church is going forward. That business is moving forward. All will be determined by how much you engage yourself with this great visitation in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ every revival advances the church of Christ the early church grew from 120 to 3,120 in one day next time there were 5,000 more added at 4-4 Next time, they were multiple of men and women at 514. Next time, the number of disciples multiplied greatly. They couldn't count anymore. Next time, almost the whole city gathered together to hear the word of God. Every move of the Spirit advances the church of Christ. I therefore decree that no church represented under the sound of my voice remains at the same spot again. It's not addition today and subtraction tomorrow. He said the Lord was adding to the church daily. Adding to the church what? Daily. Adding to the church daily. I decree that to be so in the name of Jesus. Let me say this tonight. If you choose to engage between now and next Shiloh, your life will have become a surprise to yourself. Yeah. Number three, every revival rescues people from the dungeon of Satan to serve the living God. In Habakkuk 
chapter 3, verse 4 to 5. All everlasting mountains, all perpetual hills, in the midst of a revival, shall be leveled out. All of it. I behead set and fall like lightning from heaven. Those are the things that happen in the midst of a revival. Listen to this. Someone got saved here and had been under one siege for a long time. He will earn money, bring money to the house, and the money will disappear. No breaking in, no opening of window or door. The money will disappear straight. Gave his life to Christ and they handed over to him the welcome to church package. So he said, so when he got to me, now put his money inside that package. Put it at the corner of the room. Woke up in the morning, two dead rats. Long mouth rats. And same hour, two dead uncles in the village. And the siege ceased. Two dead rats, two dead uncles. One day, there is no normal, that's divine judgment. He said, of judgment, because the prince of this world is judged. Because the prince of this world is judged. Rescues people from the dungeon of Satan to serve the living God. Every reviver rescues people from the dungeon of Satan to serve the living God. One of us had, one of our daughters here had elephantiasis, was split with elephantiasis, and a, a very horrible boil on the nose, and carried the same heavy legs to go and witness. Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you. Go back home. The pastor saw why her was crying when he was coming because of the pains, anointed her. She went back home and slept. The boil in the nose gave way with a life maggot. The two elephantiasis leg crashed and became normal. Rescued from the dungeon of Satan. Now listen to me. Every siege of the enemy on anyone's life under the sound of my voice as you turn your heart after God, they are turned into testimonies in your life. You believe that? Let me hear your loudest. Amen. Shiloh 2015. And from glory to glory. I can't hear you saying that's where I'm going. Shiloh 2015 and from glory to glory and you are sure getting there you are sure getting there you are sure getting there there. every revival rescues people from the dungeon of Satan to serve the living God somebody here in town was contemplating suicide and then had a a tract given to him and when he was to take the overdose drug, it was the tract that came out Jesus still delivers from indebtedness just a moment to his death Jesus stepped him and rescued him when we are reaching out to people, you don't know what you are doing. Just getting someone out of the grave without knowing. Just one more hour and you'll be gone. Jesus rescued. You can't be in his rescue army and be a captive. No. So the cheapest way to be free is to enlist in Jesus' rescue army. Hey, may you be free automatically. You'll be free forever. You'll be free automatically. You'll be free forever. You'll be free automatically. You'll be free because the husband man that laboreth must be the first partaker of the fruit. So it's your rescue line. Engagement with the move of God is your rescue line. 
Engagement with the move of God is your rescue life. Engagement with the move of God is your rescue life. Sir, you are not permitted to be sick when you are out for the rescue of the lost. Because every faithful ambassador is ordained to live a healthy life. Healthy life is the heritage of every faithful ambassador. Who is an ambassador? Anyone that's involved in reconciling the world back to God is an ambassador. Somebody's blessed. Let me say this to you. An end has finally come to your struggles in life. An end has finally come to your struggles in life. We are in a revival. The question is, are you in a revival? <laughs> we are in a revival. The question is, are you in a revival? You have said, why you must be a partaker of this revival? Because it's the only way for you to qualify for the benefits that accrue. Yes, we are in a revival, but are you in a revival? Man, not everybody in this church is in that revival. No. I'd be stupid to think so. Why others are praying five hours? Some have never prayed one minute. If they ever prayed, they just like the church, they like, you know, all the pastors speak very fine English. Um, and then, um, yeah, no, it's, it's, it's a good place. And, uh, but I, I, I just love to listen to Papa, you know. You know love. But all these instructions, I don't I don't I don't like this is I'm gonna go for outreach you know, for what? Um, I'm just okay. <laughs> if the day you will know you are not okay, maybe too late. <laughs> because you met me in this thing. So seventy six I've been doing this. Consciously. Understandably, no guesswork. And now I was too sure of a future. Man, I have never called on any mortal man in my life for any aid. Now please help me. Isn't that dignifying? Can't you find God and settle with him? But this time your story is changing. Your story must change. Your story is changing. And in the name of Jesus, Shiloh 2015 will remain a landmark event in your life. This is changing your perspective once and for all. Changing your perspective once and for all. Changing your perspective once and for all. Amen. As long as you don't stop engaging, you don't stop advancing. <laughs> as long as you don't stop engaging, you don't stop advancing. As long as you don't stop, so from glory to glory is not a wish, it's a walk. It's not a wish. It's a walk. I said to God today, I said, show me thy glory. He said, prove your dedication. And you have committed me to show you my glory. Prove your dedication. He said, the time to glorify you has come. But except a grain of wheat fall to the ground and die, it shall be alone. But if he dies, then he for much fruit. If any man serve me, let him know he must be dedicated to what I've asked him to do. Amen. So that where I am, the same glory that I, Jesus, have. The glory of the Son. The ultimate glory. Amen. There is one glory of the Son and Jesus is the Son of Righteousness. Can I hear your amen? amen. And one glory of the moon. And one glory of the star. And one star different from another in glory. 
Amen. The best you have in the world are stars. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's only in the kingdom that we have moon and have the sun. That's why there is no star in the world that can ever compare with a kingdom star. Yes, sir. Because they are all stars for a season. Somebody takes it from you after a while. You are the heavyweight wrestling champion. Somebody else takes it from you tomorrow. But they that be wise, like Daniel, shall shine as the bright of the firmament. And they that turn many to righteousness. Did you see now? Turn men to righteousness as stars forever and ever. Don't no stop it. Because no human being brought me here. There is no gang up of demons and men that can remove me from here. I mean, that, that I know, sir. Thunder will strike. I mean, he said, whatever the Lord does shall be forever. Somebody here was raised from being crippled 1999, the first Shiloh. He walked up here this year. It's a dickness in the church. He said, I'm now 60 years old. I'm still on my feet. Jesus was the one that healed her. So no devil can stop it. From when the Father positions you, no demon, no authority, no witches, no wizards can bring you down. Amen. There are many of us, just talk rough once, you'll be sick for life. Just talk rough. What do they mean? You'll be smitten. Because it's what God has made him to be. You are too small to challenge that. If you see witches, ask them. Will you go on a mission to this man? They say, never. The man tell us, but share the story, very humbling story. He said, as he came to our home in the U.S. that time, he said, he saw the devil at the gate. I mean, around the, the, the road in front of the house. And some two demons with them. And the demons, while the devil was busy doing one thing or another, the demons was, were trying to enter the house. Satan said, stop that! Don't enter that place! Have, have you not been warned? T.L. Osborne was sharing that vision of the Lord. T.L. is not a me man. He's gone to glory right now. Not a me man. Then why was visiting to another demon was trying to enter? Stop that! Have I not warned you before? He said, this attack will come twice. But we never come again. And that was the end of it. There are places where demons don't dare. That's where you are coming into. He said, I behead the devil fall like lightning. When you are in partnership with Jesus, every devil falls before you. Every devil falls before you. When you are in partnership with Jesus, every devil falls before you. You can't buy that with money. You can't buy that. If it is much we are making, we'll have been dead longest time. They know. All the force of hell know. These are dangerous persons on the earth who are in active partnership with Jesus. Amen. And if God be for us, from today, you believe in as if the devil were dead. The devil is not your problem. You're not being in partnership with Jesus is what makes you a victim. The devil is not your problem. Take your eyes off the devil and face the issues of your life. Come and give the Lord a big hand of praise. Stand to your feet one minute first. And pray this prayer. Grace to engage with the wonders of your visitation in my life. I'll receive it right now. Go ahead and pray that prayer. Grace to engage maximally. Rade Susa Rade Praktanabarat. Rada Zero Brektenero Tia Yesha. Take that grace. Pray that prayer from the depth of your heart. Grace to engage maximally with the wonders of divine visitation now receiving. Pray that prayer from the depth of your heart. Thank you, Jesus.
In Jesus precious name we have prayed. In the name of Jesus we have prayed. Paul said, I labor more abundantly than them all, yet not I, but the grace of God that was with me. And we don't wait for grace, we pray for grace. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we, throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. Don't wait for grace. Any grace that is lacking in your life, pray for it. Pray it down. Pray it down. Pray it down. Pray. Don't watch your prayer life go down the drain. Oh God. And deal me with the spirit that helps men's infirmity in prayer. Let fresh prayer oil come upon my life. Don't watch your life go down the drain. It's all of grace, but grace is not free. Grace is released on demand. You demand for any missing grace in your life. So you don't miss out, uh, miss out of God's great plan. In the name of Jesus, you have called for grace for maximum engagement. That receive in the name of Jesus. Wherever you are found today, you'll be that renowned Jesus boy, Jesus man, Jesus woman, Jesus boy, Jesus girl. In the name of Jesus. And this is what the Bible says eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. It doesn't enter the heart of any man the thing that God has in store for them that love him. Watch as your life becomes a living wonder. Watch as your life becomes a living wonder. First, imagine that 19 year old boy living in one room, no toilet, no nothing, with the family. And suddenly, by engaging under six months, the heavens open. Now he's eating with president in six months. Now listen, 50 years of nominal Christianity will not measure six months of active Christianity. So you can be here as I've been in this church now. This is now my 20. What now? Remind me. Stop counting days, start counting values. Stop counting days, start counting values. Would they miss you if you are out? Then you are not there. <laughs> Would they miss you in your group if you are not there? Then you are not there. You have been in church 20 years. Has anybody known Christ through you since you came? Brand new day. Please get seated one minute. Let's conclude tonight. If you are here in this opening night and all over the world and you know that you know that you know that you are not born again yet this is one night you must not miss because except a man is born again he cannot see the kingdom of God he cannot see all I've seen and I've come short of the glory of God. It takes new birth to qualify to assess the glory of God. Wherever you are tonight, here at the Faith Tabernacle and in all the various centers around the world, they say, Jesus, save my soul. Make me a child of God. Forgive me my sins. Write my name in the book of life. I mustn't miss this glorious wave that has come my way. Wherever you are, stand to your feet. I'd like to pray with you. You want to be saved tonight? You want to be born again tonight? Please stand. Stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. Please stand. Stand to your feet wherever you are. Stand to your feet. It's free. Jesus fully paid the price. It's free. Stand to your feet, people of God. You want to give your life to Christ tonight? There are also people here tonight that need to rededicate their life to Jesus. If you are here, you want to rededicate your life to Jesus. Maybe you are once saved, but at the point I would say disconnect. But tonight you want to return back to God. Stand to your feet. Please stand. Wherever you are, stand. You want to rededicate your life to, to Christ and begin again. Please stand. Somebody here 
backslid for 19 years. In the course of that time, he lost his two limbs, he couldn't walk again. Became impotent. Jesus brought him back to himself. Not that he left church, he left Christ. He left Christ. He wandered the way to live for another God. He lost everything and from the castle, oh, virtually sleep naked. But when he returned, he restored his two legs and destroyed impotency in his life. He stood by himself here. That is the power of rededication. All of you are standing up, please go to the nearest eye also, to where you are standing. Officials are there to help you. Until you return, your dignity cannot be restored. Until you return, your dignity cannot be restored. Somebody else is standing up. Stand up quickly right now. Stand up quickly right now. And be part of this restoration wave. Stand up right now and be part of this restoration wave. Everybody standing up, both here in Canaan land, all the viewing centers around the world, and those of us who are before our laptops in any corner of the world, you're responding to the call of salvation and the dedication tonight. Bow your heads in prayers. Lift up your right hand before the Most High God. As I lead you in this simple prayer of faith, every one of you, say with me, Lord Jesus, say it loud, Lord Jesus, I surrender my life to you tonight. Forgive me my sins. Wash me with your blood. I believe you died for me. On the third day you rose again. That I might be justified. Right now. I believe my sins are forgiven. I'm justified by your blood. I am saved. I am restored. I am born again. I'm now a child of God. As I proclaim you, Jesus, as my Lord and my Savior, I am delivered from the power of sin to serve the living God. Thank you, Jesus. For saving me. Amen. Keep those hands up. Father, I pray over these precious souls. Your grace has brought them in. Let the same grace preserve them. I cover every one of you tonight with the precious blood of Jesus. Remain covered in the many days of your life. In Jesus' precious name. In the name of Jesus Christ. So shall it be. Jesus is Lord. How many are glad to be part of this first night of encounter? How many have heard from heaven tonight? How many have received the word of God tonight? Please stand to your feet, everybody. Lift up those two hands to heaven. If anything has gotten across to you tonight, from the depth of your heart, return the thanks to God. From the depth of your heart. Thank you for bringing me into this wave of glory. Thank you for repositioning me in this mighty move of the spirit that has come at this time on the face of the earth. I thank you Jesus for opening another chapter to my life. I thank you Jesus for showing me what to do to move from glory to glory. I thank you, Jesus, for releasing your grace on my life to be a partaker of this great way at this time. I thank you, Jesus. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. The church of Christ is coming to that point where James said, is any sick among you? Because the church became sickness free. The church became what? As long as those fellows who are walking with Jesus, not one fell sick. Not one fell sick. Peter, James, John, Bartholomew, Matthew, everybody. Not one concern on their health. Sir, this revival we humiliate sickness and disease yeah. as if they never existed. Humiliation. One of us has not been in church since 2005 because he had 
a road accident. And they arranged so much iron things on his leg. He said, after hearing the testimony of the elbow metal implant, Jesus who did that, do it for me. Do it for me also. He was in the bedroom and all the iron wah. He attends first service today at 6 o'clock every Sunday morning. Man, we're going to chase sickness yes. away. Yes. James said, is any sick among you? Because we, we don't expect you to be sick. Is any sick among you? Call upon the elders. The pastors won't have the time for that. They will talk about you. Is any sick among you? Therefore, I decree that every sickness that may have come with anyone here who has chosen to the position to partner with Jesus, every such sickness and disease drops off you now. God never lies. Neroshi garade praktana boradeza. God never lies. They brought someone from Germany as because he could not excrete, he could not. So as he was coming out of the hospital in Germany, they just deported him straight to the airport. Don't die here. And they said, the mother said, come over to church. As he got to the gate, that is the entrance of that place. He said, excuse me, where's the toilet? Where's the toilet? Where's the toilet? Purge all the devils out. All the devils. I saw him. He said, I don't want to. I want to remain here. He said, anything they can get me to do, I want to remain here. Man, you have come to a ground that forbids sickness. Yes. Therefore, where you are standing tonight, because he needs you. Yes. Because he needs you, he can watch you molested by sickness. If you choose to serve him, you are not permitted to serve sickness. Say, so thou shalt serve the Lord thy God. He will bless your bread and take sickness away from you. By your choice tonight, you wake up tomorrow morning into a brand new world of divine health. <laughs> Lift up those two hands. First night, every package that goes with the first is released into your life. Yeah.